Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final session for writing Wikipedia articles, the final class session. Uh, we will have a lab session on Thursday, as we do every week. Um, but this is our last organized class. And um, I do, I want to announce that we have an additional guest this week. Uh, typically, we just have our guest panelists uh, in weeks four and five. Uh, but this time, we were not able to coordinate one of those times with our, our guest today, who is Maya Weinstock, who's a longtime Wikipedia contributor from the Boston area. So we'll be hearing a little bit from her uh, a little bit later in the session. Um, so as the last class, I think this is, um, this is one that we, we usually turn over to uh, more to the students. It's a little bit more like a lab session than our others, um, because we like to uh, get into what you've been working on and um, what you've accomplished or what is holding you back from accomplishing more um, and really make sure that everyone has a good uh, sense of how to go off into Wikipedia and work on your own. Um, so we'll, we'll be talking a bit about, um, about how to find and join a wiki project. Uh, we'll talk about how to, uh, how we can work towards establishing a wiki project around open educational resources and related concepts, uh, which I think is going to merge nicely with, um, with an idea that Jade brought up in our last session and also on the class talk page um, around creating a, a navigation template or a, um, an outline of open educational resources as a Wikipedia article. Um, so I think there's going to be lots to talk about in there. And, uh, and then hopefully, we'll also be able to talk about how to do local uh, Wikipedia meetups. Um, some of you may live in areas where there are people already organizing something. Um, and others might not, but it's, it can be very easy to, uh, to set something up at like a local library or a coffee shop or something like that and, and get some local Wikipedia contributors to show up and talk about what they're working on. So um, I guess my main goal in this session is just to make sure that everyone has a few options of things that they can do to stay connected around Wikipedia um, and, uh, and you know, sort of knows how to get the help that they need. Of course, you're always welcome to, to ask me questions on my talk page or shoot me an email. Um, and probably your, your classmates as well. Um, so we should make sure that those are in the mix also. And finally, uh, we will probably want to set up a, a reunion session for this class. Um, we did one after the last session, which uh, a few of our students attended, and it was, a, it was a really nice way to kind of recap what we'd all accomplished together. Um, it was about a month after our last class, and uh, it might be nice to do that for this one as well, and maybe maybe for people, uh, students who were in various sessions of the class. Anyhow, um, Maya, if you're uh, if you're ready, I would like to uh, turn it over to you and hear a little bit about your work. Um, do you want to click the talk button and? Let me know if you're if you're ready, and I'll give you a little intro. I guess I'm ready. Um, can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, I'm still having slight issues uh, with the window, so I might ask you to just help show what I'm trying to show. Um, but um, yeah, uh, welcome everybody, and thanks for having me. Um, I'm also going to just say right now. This morning, unfortunately, there are jackhammers right outside my apartment. So, sorry if you can hear those. <laughs> I'm like huddled Always in my bedroom, story, yeah, like a one room that doesn't actually have direct line access to those windows. Um, but you can still hear it. Anyway, um, so yeah, um, I guess I would just uh, give a little bit of background into some of the stuff that I've been working on most recently. Um, I'm really excited to see what you guys have been doing with this class. Um, I recently have um, been working toward having um, public events here in the Boston area. And actually, I had one in Arizona as well, and I'm doing one in Rhode Island next month. 
Um, but um, my interest is in um, updating mainly biographies. Um, I, my background is in science journalism, and I'm interested in um, helping increase awareness of females in the STEM areas and also increase participation of um, women with uh, Wikipedia, Wikimedia, and all the related projects like that. I, so, think, I think some of our students will know what STEM is, but some might not. Oh, okay. STEM is uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Um, so that's it's an acronym that's become super popular. But um, sorry for not <laughs> explaining what that is. Yeah. So um, I I do tend to focus quite a bit on um, just working on articles that um, you know uh, detail the histories of of women and men too, um, but mostly women uh, who have contributed. Uh, significant um, papers, research, and work to the various STEM fields. Um, so I guess I can start a little bit by just, um, I can show you, well, Pete, would you prefer that I go over sort of like the example of um, the uh, most recent event that I'm organizing and I can go through some of the topics right on there or? That sounds fine. Okay. All right, so um, the project I'm working on right now is, a, is an edit-a-thon, which I'm sure you guys have heard of, but basically we want to get around um, word that we are organizing an event that anyone can participate in. Um, we hope people will show up in person, but we also want people to be able to um, participate online if they can't make it. And our edit-a-thon is one of many that have popped up uh, around this event called Ada Lovelace Day, which is a now annual event that celebrates women in the STEM fields. Um, it started by encouraging women to, or anybody to blog about <laughs> women in the STEM fields and, and their contributions. Um, and now, um, last year, I believe, was the first year that there was a really coordinated effort to have uh, Wikipedia edit a thon as part of this, um, and the folks at Wikipedia, I'm sorry, the folks at Ada Lovelace Day have now encouraged people as well to um, organize edit a thons, you know, large and small. So this is um, the edit a thon from last year, actually, um, but it, the, page, the page for this year looks pretty much the same. And um, let's see, oh, this is, part, this is the page that uh, describes uh, the larger event from, yeah, last year. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Maya. I'm having a little trouble finding the current page. <laughs> Any hints? OK. Um, you know what? I'll throw it onto the, the chat okay. box real quick. Um, I'll do that. Sorry. Not as uh, facile with the Blackboard cl uh, Collaborate here. So None of us are. All right. So the link in <laughs> So the link I just included is is uh, the one I'm looking at right now, and um, yay! So essentially, um, this is a basic uh, event page, and if you ever wanted to organize an event, um, creating a page like this, and it doesn't have to be for you know uh, Ada Lovelace Day, it could be for any any kind of theme, and it doesn't have to even be a theme necessarily. But anytime you organize some sort of a uh, collaborative event where you want people to show up, it's a good idea to create um, an event page that sort of organizes all the details of the event as well as, you know, any um, suggested articles that you want people to consider. Um, people don't necessarily have to work on those articles, but it's just sort of like a, a, a brainstorm um, and it's a way to get people thinking uh, about participating, um, you know, deciding whether or not they want to participate. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit, um, you can see, you know, uh, we have the event details, which are important, obviously, just so people know where to go. Um, we always have a guest list. Um, this is one thing that I've struggled with a little bit about um, how to RSVP um, and how to have, ask people to RSVP for uh, an event such as this. Um, many in the Wikipedia community prefer to just be able to RSVP straight on a, an event page like this which is great, um, but not everyone who attends such an event actually is already on Wikipedia as a registered user. 
So I usually try to have at least one social media um, RSVP route. In this case, we decided to do a Facebook event page. In past uh, events, I have set up meetup pages through meetup.com. Um, and I know that you're not necessarily uh, <laughs> encouraged to provide your own personal email on Wikipedia pages, but in these cases, I have, and it has actually been useful. Um, so, so there's that. Uh, um, I think, uh, my, you know, um, as far as suggested just, just topics, to, just to break in on that yeah. point, I think um, a lot of a lot of Wikipedians tend to be very private about their um, about their personal identity. So sometimes when you set up uh, set up something like an event sign up page and require people's email addresses, you might get you know people might be a little grumpy about it. Um, and I think I think what what you what you're describing here is something that I've done as well when setting up events, which is to set up both a sign up page on Wikipedia and a sign up page on Facebook or on meetup.com. And it, it really does it strike that balance pretty well because people can sign up in either place, and you know the people who are more familiar with Wikipedia, maybe more reluctant to share details about themselves, can just sign up on Wikipedia, and um, other folks who are less familiar with Wikipedia can do something that's maybe a little more familiar to them. Anyway, just just wanted to exactly to kind of, uh, reaffirm that. No, that's great, and thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, I mean, I think some of the people who have used email, um, you know, in some cases they might already be Wikipedians and they just don't necessarily, you know, want to put their name out there. Um, but usually email is, is the most private way to, to RSVP. Um, and so some people have definitely used that route. Um, so moving on, just so I can uh, get through um, all this and, and some of the Wiki project stuff. Um, toward the bottom of the page, we include um, suggested topics. Um, again, you know, you can use as many as or as few as you like. Um, in this case, I just use a lot of holdovers from last year's edit-a-thon that didn't actually get done or that uh, still need work. Uh, I will just point out here that um, in the last, in this particular event, I have actually gone through and started giving examples of things that might be done as part of the event, um, edits that could be done. Um, in some cases, there are great articles already out there, but that could use various uh, smaller things. Like, for instance, um, Sylvia Earle is a, a very famous oceanographer. She has a very, uh, a pretty good page. It's got a lot of information on it already. Um, <laughs> I actually added her picture with my little Lego that I made of her. Um, and she, um, the problem, unfortunately, is that she didn't until recently have uh, an icon box or an info box, and she didn't have a photo. Um, her There's a lot of information on this page, but it's just sort of random facts thrown out there. It's not really prose. Um, there are plenty of places where there are not references. So although this has a lot of information on it, it could still use work from someone who you know, would be interested in sort of taking some of these individual single line facts and weaving it into a more narrative type of thing. Yeah, I, I can see there's there are entire paragraphs that have no right. no references or very few, which is exactly. which yeah. I don't think we've mentioned explicitly exactly. in the class, but this is something that's of particular concern uh, for articles about biography of living people. Mm -hmm. um, because of course there's that much more chance for, you know, actual harm or confusion uh, if there are bad facts in, a, in an article about someone who's actually out there living their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's especially valuable to to improve the the referencing in an article like this. Yep, definitely. And you know, in some cases, um, I mean, I, usually we don't focus on this uh, because people are less interested in doing this for uh, an edit-a-thon, but. You know, even simple things like combing through the existing references and making sure there aren't duplications, um, you know, making sure the formatting on references is relatively straightforward. I mean, I've, I've seen articles that have um, been astounding. Uh, one example is, I don't know if you guys watch Breaking Bad, but the science editor, or the science advisor, I think her name is Donna Nelson, 
has a crazy uh, Wikipedia page, um, and her <laughs> the references on there were just insane. So um, you know, it just it depends on what you're interested in working on, but um, yeah, a lot a lot of um, scientific papers, um, but. At a certain point before I cleaned it up, there were references, like seriously, like there were lists of like 15 or 20 references ill properly formatted in the body of the actual text as opposed to in the reference section. So these are all things that can be um, really good edits to suggest to people if they don't know what to work on. Um, at the same time, most people want to write about a topic that they're interested in. I think that's why we mainly all come to Wikipedia to, to um, contribute. And so usually in an event where people are coming together to do that kind of stuff, um, especially newbies, people who don't have much Wikipedia editing experience um, or tend to be interested in, in doing that. Um, so Maya, can I just, um, let me just break in for a moment. I think that, um, I think this is all really good, but, I, but many of our students might be, um, might be thinking right now, wow, I, you know, I've, Early edited Wikipedia. This is a lot to take on. Is there, can we just talk a little bit about how to find an event uh, and you know see if there's one that might already be going on in your area? Sure. Um, I mean, there are different ways to find them. Um, uh, well, I know some. If you're already on Wikipedia and you have a um, you know username and you're registered and everything. Um, Sometimes you'll get a random geo notice of an event come to your talk box. Um, I have only sent out one geo notice, so I'm not like the most uh, well spoken on how to how to create one. Um, and you know, I have done it before, but um, so that's one way. Although that's not a very active way to try to find um, events. Um, but just just so you know where to look, that's typically going to show up at the top of your watch list. Oh, it's on the watch on list. The okay, sorry about that. Well, it's a, there are two different kinds of notices, but the ones that are geographically based and and are pretty easy for event organizers to set up live at the top of your watch watch page. Where I've got one highlighted on mine right now. Got it. And so this is going to be something you know if you live in a in a big metropolitan area, it's likely that you'll occasionally see something like this. Uh, if you're not, then you probably won't. But uh, it's definitely something to look for. Um, there are also more local meetup pages, um, but as you say, Pete, it it tends to focus on areas that are more metropolitan, um, higher density of uh, people. Um, but they, you know, I think there are event pages for various states as well. I know when I was organizing an event in Arizona. Um, I tried to find people and you know organizations through that avenue, and there weren't any. <laughs> but you know, you can always make one um, if once you get to that point. Um, but yeah, if you live like let's say I live in Boston uh, or New England, if you live in New York City, um, there are definitely meetup pages that uh, describe upcoming events. Yep. So this is a uh, actually. I don't think I've added my new event to this one yet. There's actually quite a few places I find to find events, and they're not always updated uh, at, the, at once, just because they're kind of all over the place. So, but um, yeah. Oh, this one does have it, so that's good. So, Pete, did you want me to go over anything relating to um, wiki projects at all, or? Uh, I think if if you're um, if you have something to share, I think we. would Love to hear about it. Um, it. Either you know, if you wanted to go into a little more depth just on a specific article that you've worked on, or if you have a, a story to tell about a wiki project too. I think, I think that wiki projects are something that might make more sense for more of our students, considering that some are not going to live in places where there are active meetups going on. So if you have a little bit to say about that, sure. that'd be great. We've, we've talked about them a bit in the class before. Yeah. But a little recap. Never hurts. Sure. Okay. Um, let me. Throw into the um, which we call it the um, event or the chat box um, another link for you guys. Um, so here it is. Um, this is the um, wiki page for the wiki project Women Scientists, which um, I am interested in and involved in. 
I've only known about it for less than a year, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm still kind of getting um, my feet wet. Uh, but basically, this is a typical project page. Um, you can find project wiki projects for so many different things. I know Pete was discussing uh, the idea of possibly having one for an open, sort of like a wiki project for open things, <laughs> which would encompass many different um, open source projects. Um, but this is just one example. And um, it includes um, examples of things that you might work on to help update pages uh, and articles on uh, a particular theme or topic. Um, in the case of the, the women scientists one, uh, I know we have um, sort of um, milestones that some people who worked on various articles have achieved, including you know, working toward making an article a good article. Um, I don't know if you've talked about that yet, but um, a good article is one. Have you guys talked about that at all? Yeah, we talked about uh, featured articles and a little bit more in passing good articles as a okay. sort of a lighter weight version of featured articles. So these are all sort of ways to encourage people to make Wikipedia articles better. Um, you know, there's a designation of good article. Um, some articles are featured on the main English homepage, um, and sort of that counts as a, if you can get it on there, then that counts as sort of a, a, a something that you can work toward, um, either in the featured article or as a, a did you know? Did you know? There are sort of tidbits about the most recently updated Wikipedia articles. Um, so, yeah, so this is basically, if you just uh, scroll through here, you can see there's usually a list of people who are interested in the project. Um, this project seems to me relatively, um, it, it could be fleshed out a lot more. I just haven't had time to do more with it. Um, but I think you could probably say the same for a number of wiki projects. Um, but, you know, I would definitely recommend if there's something that you are particularly passionate about, um, you know, look into wiki projects. Um, and see if there's something that you might want to contribute to and take a lead in. Um, and again, it's really just, at least for me, just been a matter of, you know, doing the stuff that I'm interested in already and then sort of logging it on these pages. Um, so, yeah. And one, one thing that I've pointed out about wiki projects in the past, and I don't, you can maybe let us know if this is true of this particular wiki project, that usually the best way to get involved um, is just to go on the talk page and see what people have been discussing recently and maybe leave a note introducing yourself. Yeah, uh, definitely. You the talk page is a kind of a central thing on this one? Um, I personally haven't used it that much, and maybe I should more. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's definitely a good piece of advice, though. Um, you know, obviously, this is where people come up with various ideas for uh, things to add to the to the project. And if there are questions about particular areas, um, you know, folks will obviously um, throw their piece of advice in there too. So yeah, that's a that's a good piece of advice. And, and I'm seeing just as I look at it, I'm seeing that there are you know just looking at the dates of the last few comments, mm -hmm. there are several that are pretty current. So that's always a good yeah. sign because sometimes you come along and the most recent. <laughs> The most recent comments on the project's talk page are from a year or two ago, so that's, that would be a sign that there's not a whole lot going on there. Right, exactly. Cool. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much um, what I had to offer you guys. But if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for all of that. Um, sure. Sarah, have you seen any questions coming by in the chat window as Maya's been talking? Sometimes the questions Hi. are a little slow in coming here, so. Hi, everybody. Um, no, nothing too specific to um, what Maya was talking about. I think it was clear. But if anyone does have questions about wiki projects and, and um, putting together edits and sounds and things, they should certainly throw out their questions now. A few other more general questions uh, rolled by towards the beginning before Maya started speaking. Right, yeah, I remember. Uh, Jade had a question about um, about the difference between some sort of jargon terms uh, of 
portal category and wiki project, and there are probably a few others that we could throw in there. Yeah, and she just, uh, and she just posted might, that question again. Great. Okay. So this might be a, a good use for the Etherpad. Maybe we can just kind of throw out some really quick definitions on our Etherpad page. Uh, Maya, do you want to address that question, or should I? Um, can you repeat what you were? I'm, I was uh, following up on trying to find something out, and then I couldn't hear what you were saying. Sure. So Jade has asked about the difference between portals and categories and wiki projects. Uh, and I think there are probably a few other concepts that might go in there, like outline pages and nav boxes. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you want to speak to that a little bit? I think there's just a bit of a jargon issue here where we use a lot of words that in English sound pretty similar, but they mean really distinct things. On right. Distinct um, but interrelated things on Wikipedia. Sure. So I think a category is mainly um, a, a pay or a, a, an organizational tool for organizing individual Wikipedia articles. Um, and that can be a way to find things, but you know, um, it's not necessarily um, a way to organize people together working on a common um, project. And I think that would be more something like a wiki project. A wiki project is, is really meant to be sort of a, a central location for people to um, discuss a particular topic, to and, um, you know, recommend changes um, to um, propose, you know, some larger project of changes, whether it's, you know, let's try to add info boxes to all of these in a certain way or something like that. Um, I have to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know the, what a portal is so much. Um, so maybe Pete, you can help me out on that one. Okay, so I don't think this is one we need to spend a lot of time on. Portals are... They're sort of specialized Wikipedia pages that um, are often kind of associated with the wiki project uh, that sort of that give a, a nice overview of a topic. So I'll just pull up one that I'm uh, somewhat familiar with, uh, which is the Oregon portal. Um, and they kind of look roughly similar to the front page of Wikipedia, but it's like a front page that's specific to a topic. So you have this intro that's uh, that's maybe a, uh, a it's a summary of the main article about Oregon uh, and then if you scroll down you have these boxes where things rotate through so you have this there's, there's a, a selected picture and we have a list of maybe 20 or 30 different pictures that randomly ro rotate through that uh, a selected article same thing uh, a biography and then here's uh, some did you know so it's as you see it, it looks kind of similar to the front page but I wouldn't really worry too much about this because they tend to take a whole lot of effort to build and maintain. And if you look at the number of people that actually look at them uh, from the statistics page that we've looked at a couple of times, it's never very many. So uh, unless you really had, I, I think a good use for a portal might be, say, if you had like uh, you know a local museum or a local library or something that wanted to set up a, a con computer terminal, you know, with with Wikipedia on it so that visitors could engage with Wikipedia and sort of be steered towards a topic, that might be a great use for a portal. But unless you have a sort of active real world use like that for it, uh, I think it's kind of unlikely that a lot of people are going to find their way here. Cool, thanks. Um, yeah, I learned something new. Honestly, I didn't even know that those existed. <laughs> so, great. Proving my point. <laughs> So I think we've covered uh, I think we've covered wiki project pretty well. Um, there are also there's navigation boxes and uh, and outlines, um, which are th these are things that have come up on the um, on the class talk page recently. Jade, you were you had brought up an outline before, um, and I think it was outline it was outline of um, globalization. I think. Let's see if that yeah. So these are these are pages that I, I think there was sort of a rush to create a lot of them uh, a few years ago that was independent of specific wiki project. It was it's uh, wiki project 
outline of knowledge, I think, is the overall group of people that was doing these for lots and lots of different topics. And so this is a Wikipedia article, but you see it's organized as an outline. It's, um, it's basically meant to group together links so that you can get an understanding of how things fit together in, uh, within that topic. So this might have some of the same uh, issues of a, a portal article in that like a, a lot of people might not find it, but it's also it can be a lot easier to build. So um, I, I think Jade, you were really right on with your idea that this might be appropriate to uh, something like Wiki Project Open, where there are lots of ideas that need to be connected together, and um, you know it's, it, it would be useful for us to have sort of a shared idea of where the priorities are and how things fit together. Um, so I think something like this could really go a long way towards towards doing that. Uh, and then a, a related a related concept is a navigation box, and we've we've looked at those a bit before too. So if you see at the bottom of this outline article, there's this this box that you can hide or show called globalization, and it has lots of articles linked and organized within it. <clears throat> so this is something that's designed to be parked at the bottom of relevant articles. So if we go to um, if we go to some of these other articles, and I'm just guessing which ones might have it, but um, you might find that that globalization template or navigation box is at the bottom there. And it's, it's not in this case, but you see there is another one. Um, but that's the idea is that you would, you would put it in places where people will find it and it would help. It, it's sort of a it's sort of a more sophisticated version of the um, of the see also section, which is usually just a list of links. So Jade, does that uh, does that cover what you were hoping to? Uh, ah, okay. So and. So you're asking how would Wiki Project Open relate with Wiki, Wiki with uh, Communicate OER? Um, so Communicate OER is, uh, is 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 like a Wiki Project. It's what Sarah and I set up to support this project that we're doing. Um, but it's the name Communicate OER is really is just our project. Usually a Wiki Project has a more generic name like Open Educational Resources or something something like that. Um, and so, I guess really what we're looking for is um, is to do something that would make more sense to uh, to kind of last into the indefinite future, and that would essentially replace Communicate OER, uh, and might even might even incorporate some other similar ones like uh, Wiki Project Open Access. Maybe it would make sense to build one that. Uh, that covers both of those, or at least is closely related to. So, I'm, Jade, I'm going to pull up your your comment on our talk page because um, I think this is a, a good discussion for people to be aware of and jump in on if you have ideas. So this is sort of the the background, I guess, for. Um, for a lot of what we've just been talking about, this is kind of how it came up. Jade left this comment and question on our class talk page. Okay, so um, and this is something that grew out of our, our last class session. Uh, and I was I was thinking, uh, well, if if we have, why don't we just pause and see if there are any other. Uh, questions before we go in another direction. I think if if there aren't, I think a good um, a, a nice project to do for the last 20 minutes or so of this class uh, might be that we could just start one of these outlines. Um, I think just starting to build a, a Wikipedia article together would be a nice way to kind of wrap things up, uh, and that would create something that we could all come back and check in on. All right. So let's let's do that. Yes, and Rosemary, uh, I think you and Therese and man, many people have talked about an idea similar to this uh, at various times. So uh, hopefully this will be something that can can kind of draw us all draw some of these these disparate but related ideas together. So um, 
Jade, would you like to uh, take control of the computer screen and just um, do some editing while we uh, while we talk through it? I see you said you're on a pretty slow connection, so but we could give that a try, and if it doesn't work, we can we can always switch it up. Um, so here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you I'm going to turn you into a moderator, which um, so you should see. Let's see. At the top of your screen, I believe you'll see a button that says, "Well, here I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and then I think I'll see the same thing as you." So, if you uh, in the upper left of the screen, there are two rectangles overlapping, and if you and if you hover there, it'll say "Application Sharing." If you click that, you should choose your um, your web browser out of the list. And it should show up in all of our windows. So um, let's see. Oh, okay. I think you just did it. Yes, perfect. So we're seeing now your you have a PDF open. Oh, okay. Is it is it possible to increase the um, to zoom in a bit because it's a little difficult to read the text? And wow. So why don't we just why don't we just all pause for a moment so we can read and absorb this a bit. Um, Jade, if you um, if you could click back into the PDF, we've got a big gray bar where your um, when you switch back to Blackboard Collaborate, it, it obscures parts of the screen. Um, and I don't know about other people, but I'm actually zoomed in just a little more than I can't really see the edges. So if there's sort of an in-between size, that might be best. Perfect. For me, that's perfect. Um, so why don't we why don't we take about um, I don't know. Let's let's say uh, two minutes so we can all read through this and get a feel for what Jade's been working on. Okay, so I, I see we're getting some good comments in the chat window. Seems like this is like, this is some really good work, Jade. It seems like we're uh, 
really, uh, you're hitting a chord. <laughs> so, um, I wonder if if you could just open a Wikipedia page and we could start putting this into um, into a basic outline form like we were just looking at. And I think this is a, just a really good moment to kind of come back to that be bold concept uh, that when you're starting an article like this, there is really no requirement that it be, um, you know, that it be perfect from the beginning. Uh, it's going to be important to put in a, a few citations to make it clear that it's a notable topic. But, um, you know, beyond that, even if we start something off and it's uh, a little confused and a little disorganized, that's something that we can fix over time. So um, can you can you go back to the um, the Wikipedia, the talk the class talk page? So just put that in the chat window for anyone to click on. So you can either. Um, I guess you'll probably want to follow along with the screen sharing while Jade is is starting this, but um, this will give you a link to um, the page we start. I think uh, Jade, did you just stop your screen sharing? Hmm. Well, it's, I just lost your page. I'm just seeing a big gray box. Interesting. I wonder why that happened. Oh, I think. Oh, for some reason, I'm sharing. And okay, I just clicked. It looked like it was sharing my screen, so I just clicked stop sharing. Why don't you re-share your your own? So, um, click on the double rectangles again and choose your web browser again. Okay, good. That's coming back. So. Based on the uh, based on the discussion in the chat box, it sounds like maybe outline of open education might be the best title. So you see the red links that I put in my comment. Um, you can just start an article. You can just click where I put outline of open education, and that will ask you if you want to start the article. So here we have uh, an edit window, and what I what I would suggest here is a really basic, like one sentence introduction of the concept of open education with a with a link to the article on open education, and you know stating that this article uh, or this this page is going to be an outline uh, of the concept. So does anyone want to help? Help Jade out with some suggestions about how to phrase this. Maybe maybe people can put something in the chat window. Oh, and actually, I see Rosemary is already on this topic. Okay, this page is an outline. of open education. Um, I think uh, I, I would I would think maybe uh, next I might say like various concepts including uh, and then a, a short list uh, or, or or this this will organize various related concepts so. Peter, can you say a little about how many of us can edit this at the same time, et cetera? Uh, yeah, so unfortunately, we can't, as we're in this, um, you know what, we should just be doing this on the Etherpad, where we all really can edit it at the same time. 
why don't we, Jade, why don't you just copy this and put it into Etherpad, and then instead of looking at the shared screen, uh, we can jump into the Etherpad, and we can take a few minutes to do that and then just post it um, to the Wikipedia page when we're done. Sorry, I should have thought that through ahead of time. <laughs> Okay, so th so now uh, I I think most of most of our students have participated in the Etherpad, uh, but just in case this is something that you've never clicked through to, um, all you need to do is just just put in the address, um, which uh, we'll put in the chat window again, and um, and then it's it's nice to click in the upper right and enter your name. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's nice too because that way people can identify the color uh, with the name. Uh, and then you can see where Jade is typing. Let's just let's just make a uh, let's make a clear sort of box on this page. Uh, here, I'm going to just type in the address again so everyone has it. Oh, I think that I think it did work though. Um, it looks funny, but it goes to the right place. Okay, so if you're looking at the page, just scroll down about one page into it, and you'll see um, draft of outline of open education. And that big white space underneath it is for all of us to type in. So um, why don't we also start a list of concepts that should go into this page? So I'll just throw one in there. Um, and I'm, you see how I put a, um, an asterisk at the beginning. So I'm using wiki formatting so that when we copy and paste this, it's going to turn into a, a bullet list on Wikipedia. So, uh, one of, and anyone who has an idea of some some ideas from open education, please add them. Another good page to look at for ideas is our Communicate OER uh, content page, where we've collected some ideas like this. Uh, I'll put that link in the chat window. So we could probably just copy and paste a bunch of articles from that, that one that I just linked. And I think one, one thing that we should really try to do um, in the next few minutes before we post this is think what would be the best references to support an idea like this. So I know Sarah and Rosemary have been chatting a little bit about that. Uh, if you know of a, a book or a journal article that covers this topic, um, that would really be the ideal thing. Even if it's not comprehensive, it at least sort of uh, covers the idea of how some of these central ideas connect. Peter, I have a question. Maybe you said this and I missed it, but um, is this concept of an outline of a topic commonly implemented on Wikipedia? I don't feel like I've seen such articles very often. Yeah, so this is something this is something that Jade noticed. She found one and posted it to the class talk page. And um, so that, that one, the example I just pulled up uh, of global, uh, the outline of globalization is one of many examples. There are a lot of them, but you don't tend, I don't run across them all that often. Um, it seems to have grown out of something called Wiki Project uh, Outline of Knowledge, where a bunch of people decided to create um, outlines for a lot of different topics. So I think I think the idea was that they would be very closely related with Wiki Projects, but uh, in in practice, uh, I don't think that really happened. The people who so the the first one that I saw was Wiki Project or was Outline of Oregon, 
and it was almost entirely built by people not related with Wiki Project Oregon. Uh, but even so, it became a, a useful thing to kind of facilitate discussion of how do how do concepts relate to each other and what articles do we want to work on. So no one's going to come along and say this is a non-article type. I'm removing this outline. Um, I don't want to promise that that won't happen, but. Um, but it's not. This is not completely unfamiliar. So, <laughs> I think it's. I think it's likely that this will be preserved. And if it's not, then we can, you know, we can park it in our uh, in our class space and have a discussion about how to come back at this idea. Very interesting. Thank you. I'm going to delete this initial list since we're going to just get into a more comprehensive list. So I'm going to paste it lower down just in case we've missed anything. I'm also going to take these as you uh, someone has pasted a couple of source documents, so I'm going to cut those and put them at the bottom. Uh, and I guess I'll put them in a references section. Oh, I see. So, so I'm not familiar. Who who put in Hudagogi? That's not a word I know. And if you're able to, if you have a microphone, uh, if you could just tell us what that means, I think that would be interesting. Unfortunately, for some reason, Etherpad has kind of hidden the, uh, the box at the top right where everyone can just type in their name. Can identify what color they are? I mean, we've got our own users who are here list. We can sort of tell who's typing by color. But um, Oh, yeah. I think the two of us are the only ones who <laughs> put our names. But um, in the top um, right, very, very top right corner of Etherpad, there's a little box where you can see like a, like a person's shape. And you can actually type in your own color and your name next to your own color there. But for some reason, they've embedded that. So yeah, it's not very useful. Cool everyone can do that so that we can see who each other are. OK, so I see we have a, a bit of an explanation now. Hidagogy is self-instruction generally. Excellent. I'm going to delete that as a reference and just let's just make this a link. Here you go, Jane. And then up here, uh, I don't know who's in pink. Um, this bit up from the report to the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. I'm going to, uh, this is this is excellent. And I think that we should take the, the reference materials and I'm going to just put them between ref 
tags. I guess this is, oh, I see this is all one reference. So you see how I put uh, ref and slash ref at the beginning and end. That's what's going to push it down into the references section, and the other piece of that is um, the refless template that will sort of pull the footnote in down there. That's no, right. Excellent. And then the other, there's also this, uh, the basic guide to open educational resources that I've uh, mentioned a couple of times, I think is something that might inform this, so I'm going to pull that in as a reference too. we're coming up on the end of the hour. Um, I just, <clears throat> since we're, since we've basically composed this um, as a group, which is, this is, this is excellent. I'm, I'm really excited to see how quickly we've had something come together here. Um, I just want to explicitly ask um, everyone who put something in here, uh, do you agree to uh, to release this without any uh, any need for attribution or anything like that, because and, and this is this is as you probably recognize important to how Wikipedia works. Um, because if if some if if Jade now copies this and pastes it into a Wikipedia article by traditional copyright, you would have the have the right to come back and say, hey, that's my you know I. I wrote something and she copied and pasted it in there. So it's important that everyone basically tell each other, you know, we're not going to do that. And I think in a context like this, it's fine for us to do that informally. Um, but it's a good thing to think about whenever you're, um, whenever you're working in a collaborative space like this. Uh, you know, I guess another example of how something might, like this might come up is if you found something on another website, um, say an organization like uh, the Hewlett Foundation had created a web page like this, and you thought, oh, it would be great to just copy and paste this into the Wikipedia article and build on it. Um, you would need to make sure that they had licensed that text in a, in a compatible way. Uh, in the case of the Hewlett Foundation, they probably have, because almost everything they do is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, but most organizations don't do that. <laughs> so, Glenn, I guess you'll just have to come back and keep working on this after we post it. Okay, so we are after the end of the hour now, so I want to, um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to wrap this up and say if you need to go, uh, feel free. Uh, I, I think this is, it looks like we've got some good stuff going on. So if you want to stick around, I um, I have easily 15 or 20 minutes I can stay, maybe a little longer. Uh, so if anyone wants to stick around and continue working on this, I guess the the main question would be for Jade: Are you uh, are you able to stay for a little bit? Because um, I guess we don't want to work here 
and have it get Yes, she is. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, I want to, again, thank Maya for joining us. Uh, I had invited Maya to, uh, to come in for one of our, our panels in the last couple of weeks, and the scheduling didn't work out too well. So I'm, I, I'm really thrilled that we had an opportunity to bring you in anyway. And uh, I think the things that you were able to talk to us about fit really well with our final course, because they're going to help everyone uh, find a way to stick with Wikipedia. So thanks again for coming, and uh, and if we put together a reunion, uh, we will definitely let you know and hope to see you there as well. <laughs> and Peter, did we tell people we're also doing a lab on Thursday? Yes, but let's just cover that again. Yes, we uh, uh, we will have a lab as we usually do for this uh, the, the final. Session, uh, so please come to that as well. And um, I guess I had intended to set a date and time for a reunion uh, during this session, but it's a bit late for that now. So we'll do that in the lab session. Um, but let's. I, I will also start a um, a discussion thread on our class talk page in the meantime, uh, so that we can get a sense of what timing might work for everyone. Uh, I'm thinking probably about a month from now and probably uh, at the same time as either one of our class or lab sessions. So again, a, a Tuesday or Thursday morning because we know that that at least works for mo most of our, our folks. Okay, yes, and Jade, I'll, I'll be sure to send out an email as well. Okay, Rosemary, we'll, we'll be sure to come back to that topic as well. Awesome, thank you so much everybody. This has really been great. Yeah. Bye bye, Maya. Okay, so I'm going to just jump back into our into our list, oh, which is still growing. How exciting! So. I think if anyone's curious about the formatting of references, I'm going to take this, um, the Neil Butcher book at the very bottom, and I'm going to just manually uh, turn that into uh, a, a citation in the wiki format. So this is something that you can kind of use the form on Wikipedia to do if you don't want to deal with the syntax, but if you're learning the syntax, you might want to watch what I'm doing. I, I often just copy and paste this and fill in the fields that are relevant, or I use the um, the form tool that just lets you sort of fill it in like a form instead of typing in the code. Yeah. Yeah, the form is definitely the easiest way to do it, um, and we can. Well, I guess let, let me. Um, I've, I've done a I think a video that shows how to do that, so I'll try to put a link in here. Yeah, I was just adding that as an aside. I think if I, I think I think at this point I've probably memorized how to how to type it directly too. So I'm, let's see, I guess below our purple line at the bottom of this article, I'm pasting my YouTube video where I talked about how to create a reference.
So if anyone would like to take a crack at the reference just above that, the uh, Complicity and International Journal of Complexity and Education article on Hudagogy, uh, you might want to just take the similar formatting to what I did and, and apply it to that. And we, it gets a little interesting with the second offer. Um, I'm going to, I, I can help with that part if you need. I should say the way to uh, to get the, the sort of the most authoritative way to figure out what these fields should be is to look at the, um, the template itself. So again, I'm putting this below our purple line at the bottom of our new article. Um, last one, first one. Uh-oh. I just got a big error message on our Etherpad. I don't know, did other people as well? Oh, no. Yeah, the connection just went down for me too. Oh, that is that is horrible. <laughs> oh no. Well, I don't think it deletes what was there, though. I mean, it, I couldn't connect last class either. Uh, really? Lab, I, I got the same error message last lab. Okay. Well. Um, oh wait. Oh, it just came back for me. It just came back and it does have almost, the, it, well, it doesn't have the very most recent stuff. It looks like it cut off right before the last few keystrokes that I put in. Okay. So actually, if you're, I'm realizing that this is a journal, not a book. So I think we're going to use the site journal. Okay, someone, someone's ahead of me there. Go ahead. Uh, and this is going to be significant because we're going to want to say what journal it is and what volume and number it is. So. I think I'm remembering the syntax right, but we'll have to double check. So I'm going to just take that 
I'm going to copy everything in the site journal line. So from site journal down to site book, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into a random Wikipedia page. So I just have the, um, you know, whatever page I have open on Wikipedia that I can edit as long as it's one that's not protected. Um, I'm actually going to just even hit random article. <laughs> And this is this is just sort of a shortcut that I'll use. And I'll click Edit Source and delete everything in the page and paste this in. And then I'm going to just hit Show Preview to make sure that this is being formatted about the way that I want it to. Um, and because I'm not saving it, it doesn't. That's why I took a random article because it really doesn't matter. Um, as long as I'm not saving the page, I'm just doing short preview. And I'm going to just paste in right below this how it came out. So that's how the, the so the, the, the orange line uh, immediately below site journal, that's how it came out formatted and that looks exactly how I was expecting it to be. So I think we're in good shape. I need to go, everybody, but I'm excited to see this building and I'm going to um, stay engaged with it moving forward. Great. Well, thanks, Sarah. I'll be talking to you shortly and we'll, I'll see you on Thursday. I think uh, EJ has also just typed yeah. in the chat box that she's got to go and what are our next steps. Okay. I, so I, I see that. And um, so why don't we, uh, it, is there anybody who's actively in the middle of something that they really need to wrap up or it's going to make them crazy? Let me just say something in the chat window if so and otherwise let's... Um, okay, so so Jade, why don't you just copy this whole, whole section and we'll, so we'll, we'll post what we've got so far. So if you copy all of that and then go back to our class talk page where we had those, where I'd put in the links the red links to the possible titles of this article. And oh, it looks like Glenn has just put in the direct link to it, so you don't have to go back there. Okay, and then you want to click start the outline of open education article in the big, the second line or so in the big box. Yep. Oh. Oh, look. At, okay, so open education. Oh, I see. So you're going to make a link from this. And I'm just guessing where you're going, Jade. I think just in the interest of, since you, you need to go, um, just in the interest of, oh, I see. Oh, interesting. Outline of open ed redirects to open ed. Huh. Okay. So, okay. So in that, that's that's really. So I'm just going to see where. I wonder if somebody just did that. Maybe someone in our class just thought that would be a good temporary 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Glenn looks like uh, created a uh, created a redirect. Or oh no. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, Glenn started the page and someone immediately redirected it to Open Education. So <laughs> we've already found that our um, our article was not uh, necessarily <laughs> okay. So. Um, we might find ourselves in a bit of an argument with this person, but I think that's fine. Uh, I think so. Jade, why don't you you um, so when when you click on the outline of Open Education and it redirects, um, you will see a little note immediately below the title Open Education that says redirected from outline of Open Education. And if you click on that link to Outline of Open Education, it'll take you to the redirect page. <laughs> um, and so uh, now if you click on Edit Source, you're going to see the um, you're going to see the, the code for creating the redirect. So you can just delete that and paste everything in. And then it's going to be important that we put an edit summary that, that makes sense because now we know that this uh, Jethro is watching this place co page closely. So we want to make it clear that, um, that, we're, that this is an active project. So let's um, So I think what we what we want to do, the most important thing is that we want to show him the conversation that we're in the midst of. So I would say uh, recreating page, uh, I'm, I'm going to just dictate a possible edit summary to you. And if you want to you know, edit this, uh, that's fine. But let me, let me just get this out. So I would say recreating page, period. Um, this is under discussion at, and then I, uh, double brackets, oh, thanks, Glenn. Adding a note to his talk page is a great idea. So uh, put in the double brackets, and I, I think it needs to be all caps. Uh, so for for WT Wikisu, uh, you want two square brackets at the beginning, and then I think everything in between has to be all caps for it to link properly. You can you can type it without capitals, and it'll it'll go to the right place. But when you create it as a link, I think it, it needs to be that way. Um, Yeah, so I think that's I think that's plenty, and uh, you know we might find that he's unconvinced, um, but you know and and you know he might even be cranky or ornery about it, but that's okay. We'll work through it, whatever whatever happens, or or he might you know see the second attempt and see that we're more serious about it than he realized, uh, and you know that that it might be a good idea. So um, all right, so let's wrap this up. I'm going to keep an eye on what's going on actively uh, on this article. And, uh, and I think we'll be probably all interested to revisit it when we come back for the lab. Um, and we can discuss whatever happened in the meantime. So thanks, everybody, for participating in, uh, in a kind of an unusual class. This is all pretty exciting. And I look forward to seeing you all Thursday.